All right. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Pack Mentality Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Banward. This is the podcast where you're going to learn how to take control of your health and wellness through fitness, nutrition, and mindset. We did create this podcast with one goal in mind, and that was to make fitness accessible, engaging, and effective for everyone. So if you do like any of our podcasts, please do us a favor and share it with a friend. It might make a difference in their lives. So let's get right into it. Let's rock and roll. So Caitlin and I are here. We're going to be talking about how rest days are quote unquote overrated. Um, So stop resting and start doing, but we're not talking about how rest days are necessarily um, as an intense, like you shouldn't be going intense all the time, but there is time for daily activity. So we're gonna get right into it. So Caitlin, welcome. Hello. Yes. Um, How many days um, do you rest, Matt? Uh, As little as possible. (laughs) Well, on average, what would you say? (sighs) Oh, Like full days off or act, I'm actually active? Yeah, full days off. Maybe one every two weeks. Yeah. I'd say on average. Yeah, me I too. usually I like to do something every day. For sure, I agree. Um, I'd probably only rest if my schedule absolutely didn't allow me to work out. Mm. Um, or if I was just um, more mentally burnt out, I would say, then I wouldn't... Um, stress out my body anymore. And I would try to, um, use that day as a fueling day for like to work out the next day, even harder. Like that's kind of the only time I would actually take a whole day off. Yeah. Let's, let's kind of backtrack. Let's talk a little bit about kind of what like the standard is. So I know crossfit.com a long time ago, I used to follow a three on one off schedule. Um, that worked really well. And then over time, uh, I built up to where I would do, um, it would be Monday, Tuesday, I'd actually take Wednesday off, but it'd be an active recovery. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday would be an active recovery. But I'd be tra- doing some sort of training seven days a week. And what is active recovery for those of us who don't know what that is? Active recovery is where you do something low intensity, but you tend to do it a little bit longer. So think of it like a long walk. And by long, I mean like at least a minimum of an hour. Um, if not longer, um, the whole point of recovery is just to stimulate blood flow because, um, good blood circulation will transport nutrients around to the muscles. It'll help it recover. It'll also, um, help, that'll help also get fresh, fresh blood to sore muscles, which is how they repair. And then, um, it just makes the brain feel better because when you're stagnant, you know, like mm-hmm. when you just sit and you do nothing and you've, you're a couch potato, uh, I tend to feel worse. I don't know what anyone else thinks, but that's no, just how I think, I, am. I think that's definitely a standard across the board. You hear it all the time in the gym. Wow. I felt I was, came in really sore and then I moved around and I feel much better now. And we tell people all the time, like if you're extremely sore, but you have the ability to still move around, you should, you should definitely get, you know, I, like you said, blood flow to the muscles. And then that will kind of kick out the soreness or the lactic acid that's built up there. And then you'll definitely feel better usually after, cause you get endorphins flowing too. And then you're usually more likely to make better, healthier decisions after that as well. Yeah. And back in the days when I used to compete, I used to think that doing active recovery stuff was stupid. I would always like skip it and I wouldn't want to do it because I'm like, why don't I just do nothing? Yeah. Like, that it's feels boring. Like, well, it's boring, but also it's like when you get so used to working out so much, last thing you want to do is work out and work out like, and you think it's not going to be productive. Right. That low intensity people usually think it it's nothing, but actually it's building your, your base. And we just recently talked to a few people about how they need to start building their aerobic base by doing very low intensity, um, type of workouts on days that they don't feel the best. Right. Or just scaling workouts more often as well. And being a little bit more choosy about workouts you want to go hard on and then other workouts where you just kind of want to move around, um, do really good technique and just, and just kind of work on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the great thing about, about doing these long, slow aerobic pieces. And when you say when we aerobic, the technical definition of it is that, um, I can't remember I think maybe it comes from some Greek word, but it means with oxygen essentially. So you're using essentially using oxygen as a fuel source to fuel your muscles. And this is actually the most important energy system for CrossFit. And a lot of people don't think this, they think strength is everything. They think power outputs everything. And those are important. And those are huge pieces of CrossFit, but the strongest, most efficient energy system is your aerobic system. So even us here sitting, just doing nothing right now, we're in an aerobic state. Mm-hmm. So the stronger that system is, the faster we will recover because we can, you know, we use, oh, you know, oxygen as, as recovery as well. And then 
it makes you more efficient in recovering, not only between training sessions, but also between sets. So yes. for example, like if you get gassed, you know, after a 90 sec resting only 90 seconds after a set of five back squats, your aerobic system's a little weak. Or if you get gassed out really early on a wad, like maybe like five minutes in, you're already like, like your heart rate's not too bad but your lungs feel like you're breathing through like a tailpipe <laughs> that typically means that your aerobic system either you didn't warm it up enough and you didn't prep your system enough or or your aerobic system is weak yeah and it's such an underrated thing to train and it's an excellent thing to build on quote unquote a rest day yes um but like we said rest days are overrated not that resting is overrated it's essential for recovery but taking a day completely off is and that's yes. the whole point of this podcast exactly wow you really summed it up really well right there i like I, that i'm really good at what i do now <laughs> this is the 42nd podcast so. yes that was great um so let's talk about some facts right so what is like how many how many hours do you need i guess between training session training certain muscle groups to get you know the best growth the best muscle rec uh, stimulation and, and all that because people really like to know that stuff I, I think it was, what did we say? It was like between 24 and 48 hours. Yes, that's the sweet spot. Between muscle groups. Yes, Which muscle means, groups. FYI, that if I train a ton of legs, I do a ton of squats and deadlifts, guess what? The next day, I can do upper body. Yeah. I can do a bunch of pull-ups, handstand push-ups, push-ups, whatever. And then guess what? Guess what's coming? <laughs> I can do legs again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's why people do training splits, right? And a good program will split up your days where you're, you can do something every day, right? Because you just got to go back and forth between training one muscle group and then the other. And then, and then also it comes down into a more um, what type style of workout you're doing as well. If you're doing a high intensity or like we said, like a long aerobic piece, like you can fit everything in every day. It's almost like I feel like sometimes I can't fit everything in actually no, it, <laughs> in the week. You, you make a great point because FYI, if you don't know, Caitlin does most of the programming here uh, at Red Wolf. Um, I kind of help out and kind of maybe guide, yes. but she does mo like 99% of the program design. Yeah. Well, Matt is the Yoda and I'm just the, what is it? The Jedi? I've never seen Star Wars. Oh, I don't know. But so I don't understand that reference. <laughs> Matt is like... I have seen Star Wars, the I just lead. don't remember. <laughs> and then he's taught me everything I know. So we, we go ba back and forth off each other. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. So back to the point is that it's really difficult to get everything in and not to mention that this is how we also balance things to the point where, like you said, we want everyone to be coming in as frequently as we can. So we do mix up training splits to make sure we're not overly sore in one muscle group area. And if you are, you're probably weak in that area. Yes. Um, also, like we kind of going back to the energy systems things, there's three main energy systems and we try and train those energy systems because those need about the, roughly the same recovery times, 24 to 48 hours between training sessions. Yes. And they need to be hit two times a week at minimum. Exactly. So we rotate them through That's so already six so for example uh, a high power anaerobic workout which we call a cretin phosphate system which is usually some sort of like you know lifting or like lifting with intervals think touch and go reps or you know heavy sets of five back squats that's mm -hmm. usually your anaerobic system specifically the cp system or cretin phosphate or central nervous system and then the middle one which is what we know which crossfit is known for is glycolytic um which is where you use carbohydrates for fuel and that's when you think like you think like fran helen like your classic crossfit workouts anywhere yeah. between like that three minute to 10 minute range and then believe it or not you're actually using that aerobic system within that time and then anything typically seven minutes or over you're heavily biased towards the aerobic system yes yeah people wouldn't really know that they just think aerobic oh that means like at least 20 minutes or something, but you're already hitting it at seven, like you said. Yeah, we're hitting it right now, just sitting here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're in aerobic state right now. Um, yeah, so that's kind of just an overview of how we kind of rotate things through at Red Wolf CrossFit. Um, I think we have some, so we went over um, obesity. Uh, we haven't talked about the obesity rate, right? No, not yet. Let's talk about that really quick. Yeah, so it's, I think, what do we say? 42% right now for adults in the United States are obese. I mean, and it's just constantly rising, just like we always know every year. Um, and it's just simply because lack of movement, I think, more and more Americans are just becoming more sedentary and it's just the standards are honestly, I think becoming a little bit low. Right. And we yeah. hear this all the time, like people saying, well, at least I did something that's okay. Like every once in a while to say, well, at least I did something for the most part, I think having more intention, um, is needed and people need right. to be a little bit more structured, a little bit more serious and, um, you know, really think about, am I giving enough effort 
um, in my days and in my training sessions and the week and, and whatnot. Um, I just think that's kind of overlooked. That's and, a great point. And I think a lot of it has to also do with our attention. I mean, our attention is really, they even say it in business now that attention is an asset. Mm -hmm. And so marketing agencies are specifically constantly trying to gain attention. And also nowadays, like we have so many different options for what we can do in everything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's just too many things to do. And, and sometimes fitness falls to the side because like, there's a lot of fun things out there to do. That's an alternative. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's people are used to the instant gratification. So, you know, fitness is something that takes a long time. Yeah, for sure. And I, I don't think people actually know the the recommended amount of fitness that they're supposed to mm. be doing. Yeah. Um, and so we looked up some of those numbers. And I mean, straight from the CDC website, mm. the average uh, amount of fitness is 150 minutes uh, per week for an average adult. And so they break it down into three different ways. And so you could average 150 minutes by doing 30 minutes of very basic kind of slow aerobic, it's like we talk about, um, movement five days a week. And so already if people are like, oh, five days a week, that's kind of a lot. But then on top of that, they also recommend you do two additional days of strength training. So that's seven days already, right? If you do yeah, 30 that, minutes a day for five. And those then, recommendations are very good and very hard to do. Yeah. And then their second way of doing it would have been to um, uh, do 75 minutes of running or jogging straight and then additional two strength training sessions. Or their last recommendation was to do uh, two times a week, kind of a a strength training and a aerobic base. So basically car, uh, CrossFit two times a week, plus two more days of just specific strength training. And I think it's, it's awesome that they highlighted specifically strength training because that is becoming more prevalent as far as like people getting older. They now know, and well, we hope they know and understand that you need to keep your muscle mass on if you want to be independent as you get older and as, a, as an adult. Yeah. And, um, and strength training is where it's at. Yeah. Well, I mean, just hold back and think about this, though, is that, like you said, like strength training is getting more popular. Like the amount of knowledge out there for free on YouTube, Instagram, the amount of um, there's actually a lot of very good influencers that say very good things and and give accurate information. And mm -hmm. but with all this it's still getting worse. <laughs> I know. So that just goes to show like, well, what is the issue? Yeah. I mean, it's what obviously is the issue? What not, do you think it is? well, it's execution. It's just people's physical or I guess mental and physical willpower to get it done and, and to know and understand that it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and con consistency, um, to get results. And it takes more than you think, honestly. And I, yeah, it comes at a cost. Yeah, absolutely. And it has to become a priority to, you know, put your health first. If you want to have good longevity and live for a very long time and a very independent life. And, um, and yeah, I think that's, I don't know why people kind of don't know that there, like you said, there is so much information out there. You can just Google these things just like we did. Yeah. Look it up on Instagram, TikTok, Instagram. all There's those things. There's a ton of great people on YouTube who have great content. Yeah. But it's just, it comes down to execution. So finding what way works best for you and how you're going to execute this and, and reach your goals. And then not only reach your goals, but then like find maintenance, mm -hmm. right? Once you hit your goal, a lot of people are just like, okay, now what? Well, then it's about maintaining this for the rest of your life because once you stop, then you just fall right back into where you were. Yeah, exactly. Like the work is never done. Yeah. It's like, you don't, you don't win at let's say something like marriage, right? There's no, there's not a point when we hit marriage where we're like, we're done. Yeah, we made we've it. done it. We've made it. Like, <laughs> no, you keep working at it. Like yes. you keep improving. And same thing with fitness. Like your fitness will never be done. Yes, yeah, like so it'll you, always change. It's a journey without an end date. Exactly. And you, and you adapt as you get older, as your circumstances change, all these things, you know, you just adapt. It never stops. It should never stop at least because once it stops, it goes. And yeah. that's pretty much it. Or it deteriorates. Yeah. At a very fast pace. And I, and I know what a lot of people are thinking right now listening to this is they, they are automatically saying like, man, working out seven days a week is going to be really hard. And, and they're I, right. They're right. It is hard. It, it is hard. And, but I think one, this is just what helps me. I'm just going to say what kind of helps me and how I hope this helps you is that I try not to think of things anymore that it's completely black and white, that it's either hard or not hard or hard or easy, mm -hmm. I could say. But it's like, to what degree is this hard, 
Yeah. Like it's all relative to what? Yeah. Like compared to what, right? And I think that a lot of us, and we all get to this point where we all have like a preset threshold of what our personal heart is. Mm -hmm. And we've defined like this certain level of struggle as hard. Yeah. When really it's like, we're just leveling up. Yeah. Like you're just getting better because what was hard 10 years ago to you probably isn't hard now. Like, I mean, if you, if you have kids or you're, you have a family it's like, yeah, being single was a lot easier, but (laughs) when you were single, you didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You thought that was hard. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You know? And so, I mean, it's like, it's to what degree is this hard? And it's always like relative towards something else. Like, what are you comparing this to? So always ask yourself, like, what am I comparing this to? Like, is this harder than cancer? Like, no. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I mean, that is an extreme example. I don't mean to be like, like a downer, but it's true. Like, is this like, what would you rather have? Like, right. we're all going to have to pay a cost sooner or later. Like, it's like, we'd rather pay now or pay later. And a lot of people would choose to pay later. Yeah, I think, I mean, okay, so we were just watching MasterChef. And there was this point in the show that has stuck with me now for like the last three days since we've watched it. And I think about it all the time when I'm working out is she said, I can do hard things. And she said that like, as she was cooking in the finale Mm -hmm. and it was like very pressure. Like I think things were falling apart on, on one of the contestants and she was like, I can do hard things. I can do hard things. And I was like, wow, like, like that is a good mantra to have, especially when times get hard and and you feel the pressure and you just kind of remind yourself like, it's okay. Like I can do this. And, and just having that attitude of I can do hard things moving forward. Trust me, like that bar is going to keep moving and, um, and you're just going to keep getting better. Yeah. A hundred percent. Let's go into some more tips about how how can someone work up to this? Because obviously not everyone can do something. Actually, no, I, I, I disagree, actually. Everyone <laughs> Everybody can do something, can do every, something day. every day. But let's start with like, let's let's start with uh, someone who's like an absolute beginner. Like where, what would you do? What would you start them with? It's something with, that they could do. Everything. Oh, easy. Then steps. That's the number one answer. Yeah, walking, right? Walking. I mean, everybody can go out and walk. Um, just just go out your side, your door. We live in Southern California. That's where we are hosting this podcast. And anybody who lives around here can simply just go outside and go for a walk and get your steps in every day. And starting with getting 10,000 steps a day is probably like the best goal to start, yeah. start with instead of increasing weight or intensity, you need to start increasing your ability to walk and, and attain distance. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, I think walking is the most underrated exercise especially even for CrossFitters, because it's something that, that will build that aerobic system that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, um, exactly. And so like, where would you start someone like 10 minutes a day or like a certain amount of steps a day? Like, where would you start someone who's complete, who's like completely sedentary? Seven to 10,000 steps would be the ideal goal and just getting there. I mean, however long it takes you, maybe you break it up into, you know, 10, 20 minute segments, a um, couple, couple times a day, or maybe you just knock it out or a big amount all at once. It kind of just depends on your lifestyle and when you're able to, to do it. Um, some people work in the morning, so they just work, you know, walk in the afternoon. Some people sit all day. So it kind of just depends. Yeah. And I'll kind of go over my strategy is that I typically like to do, um, I like to go pretty hard during the week, like five days Mm -hmm. if I can, if I, if, if not, I usually take Wednesday or Thursday off. That's usually when I'll do my hour plus aerobic session. And I'll usually do some sort of bodybuilding with that. Just something low intensity, something that wakes me up. And then typically Saturday, Sunday is where either I'll hop in with class um, or I'll, or both days I'll do some sort of same thing. I'll do some sort of easy aerobic work with um, an hour plus plus either some bodybuilding or nothing at all, just the aerobic work. So what's something that you like to implement? Um, well, like you said, when you said you go hard during the week, that means you're referring to class, right? CrossFit, and so yeah, yeah CrossFit, I do CrossFit class. about five days a week. Um, one max. thing I want to point out and make people understand is that CrossFit class, you need to start looking at any, honestly, any class that you go to, that it is an hour long, that the class starts the moment you walk in and the moment you leave. It's not only just the workout. I find that a lot in my CrossFit classes is that people don't, or very under, underestimate my warm up um, and don't utilize it to its full potential. And these are just missed opportunities and missed reps to get yourself better, to test yourself, to see where you're at. When yeah. I ask you, someone to do five push ups in the warm up, take that time to like see, like, can I do a real push up yet? Where am I at? Like, and like kind of push yourself to have perfect reps in that sense. And then you know, take the war- the workout m- a little bit more seriously after that. But I think people don't maximize their entire time at the gym. And so once you start doing that, 
like that just adds up on top of everything else too. And that's where you can kind of maximize more time because we talked about 150 minutes, right? So that's 150 minutes a week spent working out, not Mm -hmm. just in the gym. There is a difference, right? Some people are in the gym for 150 minutes, but But spending, but they're spending 120 talking. Yes. (laughs) You know, Great so point. yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's all relative. So 150, f- you know, physical hard minutes is kind of what we're looking for. Yeah. And I know sometimes the warm up might feel, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wrap this up. I don't want to go on a tangent about the warm up because I could have a whole podcast, a separate <laughs> podcast on a warm up. But remember guys that the warm up, it, it does a lot more than just war- prep you for the workout. It lubricates your joints, which prevents injury. It g- increases blood flow to your muscles, which you're going to need for the workout. So you will actually have a better workout the more warmed up you are. And a lot of people hold back on the warm-up because they think it's going to affect their performance in the workout. If and anything, it's, it's just going to make you better. Yeah, It's not. It's not going to tire you out. You you actually want a little, sci- scientifically, you want a little bit of burning sensation. You want your lungs to be a little bit heavy. A little uncomfortable. A little uncomfortable. And then you take a short break and then you hit the workout that yeah. is ex- that that preps you for the workout because if you go into it cold it's like jumping into an ice cold pool it's just going to shock you yes exactly there is a purpose for it i mean we do take a lot of time to think about how we're going to warm up what movements we're going to do we try not to repeat a lot of you know same things uh every time we do certain movements and so it's it's another it's a learning opportunity it's also a great opportunity to just kind of you know get better at at the basics, at the fundamentals. Yeah. And keep in mind that, you know, it doesn't have to be a structure. Like you can do something active every day. It doesn't have to be completely structured. Like go for a bike ride, go play a beach, go play a sport, yeah. go hiking, go beach volleyball, um, chase your kids around a park instead of sitting there on your phone. You know, there's plenty of options that are, you know, you're working out, but it's indirect working out. You're not technically in the gym. So yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's pretty much all I have to say about rest have. days. I just think I just hope people take from this that um, just to kind of look at your your current state right now, your current routine, your current training, and just ask yourself: Are you getting the results that you expect? Are you getting the results that you want? And then just kind of from there, just say like, well, am I doing the best work possible? with the amount of time I have and the amount of effort I can put in. Like, am I giving A plus effort, right? We've said this many times recently to our members, five um, out of seven is a 71%, right? So that's a C minus. C minus. So like if you're only doing five average days out of seven on working out, like you're giving C minus effort, like, and you, but you're expecting A plus results, right? So just, I hope people just kind of, um, just reevaluate like kind of what you're doing. And then, you know, all, we're always here to talk about um, making any changes or what we think that, that anyone can do to, to get better or to improve their, their current physical state. Absolutely. And let's kind of just, um, let's do a quick run through summary. So rest days are overrated, not because resting is overrated, but you can do something and be active every single day. And, um, and that will move you further towards your fitness goals. So stop resting, start doing. Yeah. I think we could talk about a whole nother podcast on what is good rest and what actual like rest like that you should be doing as far as like sleep, nutrition and all that stuff on the side, which is way more important than taking a whole day off. Absolutely. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for listening, everybody. So I expect to see everybody in the gym seven days a week. I'm just joking. (laughs) I'm just joking. But but uh, seriously, but, but seriously, uh, but seriously, if you're listening to this and you're not going out for a walk soon, go for a walk. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. If this was helpful, please leave us a review so we know to make more content just like this. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Red Wolf CrossFit. Please DM your questions or content suggestions there. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, good luck. Have fun. Nailed, Nailed it. it.